Welcome everyone. It's Stephanie again for both Apex Languages and Gapanova School. This is Weekly Wordplay. Happy Halloween! I've got two new seasonal treats for you today. Wretched and cold-blooded. Continue if you dare. But first of all, what is the big deal about Halloween? At first glance, it would be understandable to write this holiday off as some weird devil-worshipping pagan festival. And for some people who like to take things to extremes, it almost is. But for most of us, it's just a bit of fun to let off steam, escape from reality, and take a day off to laugh at death instead of always being afraid of it. And of course, there's candy. Lots and lots of candy. What well, may be the most surprising thing about Halloween is where it gets its name. Halloween is short for All Hallows Eve, the evening before All Hallows or All Saints Day. Hallow itself means to make sacred or holy. So yes, Halloween was a Catholic religious holiday with traditions like souling, where young people would go house to house begging for soul cakes in exchange for prayers for the dearly departed. Like many Catholic traditions, however, Halloween has even older roots as an ancient Celtic pagan ritual. On the night before Samhain, yes, that's really how it's pronounced, the indigenous inhabitants of England believed that the dead returned as a ghost. So they left food on their doorsteps, lit great bonfires, and wore costumes like animal heads and skins to scare the evil spirits away. Our first word is wretched. Pronounce that with me. Wretched. Do you notice anything weird? If you did, extra points. A big reason I chose this adjective is because it's one of a short list of words that breaks English's ED rule. Pronounce ED as a separate syllable only if that word ends in a T or D sound, like sorted and sounded. Wretched, as you can see, ends in CH. So why isn't it pronounced wretched? Well, it's not alone. Here you can see a list of other words that also like to break the rules. Repeat them with me. Dogged, legged, naked, Rugged, wicked, accursed, blessed, beloved, learned, supposed, assuredly, advisedly, markedly, reservedly, unreservedness. Most are adjectives but there are also adverbs and even some noun forms. The ones with asterisks can actually be pronounced two ways. Their E is silent when used as a verb, but pronounced in select forms. So, for example, the priests blessed their marriage. It was a blessed marriage. I've seen you've learned a lot from your test. Don't you feel more learned too? The teacher marked the paper, markedly using purple ink. Now we've come to the hard part. Why? All of these words have long, complicated histories in English, but basically it comes down to the fact that although they may look like past participles, they mostly originated as adjectives, not verbs. There's no verb to make or to rug, and a dog only came later. A learned person isn't something learned, like learned vocabulary, but simply someone with a lot of knowledge. Advisedly, you probably are just going to have to memorize these. Fortunately, it's not a long list, but I hope it does help to know that there's at least a little logic to this madness. So, back to wretched wretched. It comes from Old English reka, 
which meant stranger or exile, related to an even older verb meaning to drive out or punish. From there, we got wreak, as in to wreak havoc, cause chaos. Reka, however, was not a verb, but a noun, which evolved into modern day wretch. Wretches, as you can imagine, considering that they've been kicked out of their homes and forced to live the rest of their life as strangers in a strange land, are incredibly unlucky and unhappy people. Many turn to lives of crime, and so the word can also be used to describe unsavory characters. Wretched itself is defined as very unfortunate, someone who deserves your pity, as in the sentence below. The wretched children had no money to buy food. Or, on the other hand, maybe they're not worthy of your pity, just your scorn, assuming that they're a bad person. Ebenezer Scrooge was a wretched miser who cared only about himself. Finally, wretched doesn't just have to be used for people. When used to describe other things, it generally takes on a similarly negative connotation. What a wretched homework assignment this is. Not that any of you would ever use a word like this to suggest that my assignments are terrible. One final note. There is a separate verb, to wretch, which actually means to vomit, or at least to try to vomit. When you make this awful sound, <coughs> Regardless of whether or not something comes out, you're retching. It actually comes from a distinct Old English root meaning to clear one's throat. The two words are homophones. They're pronounced exactly the same. The one difference, however, is that because retch is an actual verb, its past participle is pronounced completely normal. Simply retched, as in the following sentence. He wretched up all his food. What a wretched flu. That's enough of that wretched topic. As for our idiom of the week, I give you cold-blooded. We've been using this compound adjective to describe people without strong emotions or feelings ever since the 16th century, although it's only been used to describe their cruel actions for about 200 years. For example, you could say both he was a wretched, cold-blooded killer, or what a cold-blooded breakup letter. Doesn't always have to be about murder. It comes from the old medical belief that excitement literally raised the temperature of your blood. For the record, it is equally valid to say cold-hearted. In modern times, you can also just say cold, as in, that's cold, man, real cold. How could you do that to them? Cold is in fact used in a lot of different ways throughout English to suggest an absence of enthusiasm. Here are a few more idioms to get you warmed up, but not too much because if your blood boils, it means that you're mad. When your blood runs cold, it means that all the good feelings have suddenly and dramatically drained from your body. You're terrified. Giving someone the cold shoulder, on the other hand, means basically ignoring them, even if they're in the same room, generally because you're mad or feel betrayed or something like that. Getting cold feet is losing your ambition at the last moment, like when you're about to ask the prettiest girl in school out on a date, but lose your nerve at the last minute and don't go through with it. A few more include to stop cold or dead in your tracks. That's a very sudden hard break either related to physical movement or whatever action you'd, you'd been doing before freezing still. If your child is out cold, there's nothing wrong with that, although I never recommend leaving them out in the cold. It means that they're fast asleep. It would be very difficult to wake them up. And finally, cold calls, the bane of anyone who's ever worked in sales. It means calling strangers you've never met or dealt with in any way. They haven't been warmed or buttered up yet. In fact, they're probably very annoyed that you're calling them out of the blue. So it's quite a challenge to close any deal. 
but it is nonetheless a time-tested strategy to reach previously untapped markets. No getting cold feet now. It's practice time. In the comments below, use the vocabulary to share a story, real or made up, about a time that someone did something cold-blooded to you. I bet you felt pretty wretched afterwards, right? What did you do about it? I hope you didn't murder them in cold blood. Well, that's enough for one day. I'm going to go enjoy the weather while it's still relatively warm out. Have a happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.